We're live. What's up, Nick Pixel? What's up, A. Murray? What's up, Joshua Brandenburg? I just had to do a quick stream. I don't know how long I'm going to stay on, guys. I have to uh, go to a shindig um, out yonder. One mechanic, Kentucky Tech. What's up? Jake, the ag mechanic. What's going on? ETR Garage. Joey Morrison. Welcome, fellas, to the chat. BSS, Turnings by Turner. I'll be on live Instagram after, so wait. Seventeen people, four thumbs up. The light make it better? Should I turn the light off? Turn the light on. This guy's like... What are you doing? Yeah, so I'm just doing a... Scott W., hello for Tennessee. What's up, man? I'm just doing a quick live stream for you guys. Henry's down here. Chilling like a bear. What's up, Henry? Come here. Come on. Oh, there he is. Hey, what's up? What's going on? Dusty West, Nick Hildebrittle, Dano, Tony Couture... How's it going? 20 people in the chat. Friday Night Lights. What's up? <laughs> Ducati Parts, Mr. XCL9. Occupant. What's going on? How you doing, fellas? Yes, calm down, Henry. He is all up in my mouth. What are we working on over there, fellas? Should we go look at him working on the forklift? I'm up here at my buddy's shop. He's working on the forklift. Smash that like button. Thank you, Nick. Arathro 676 Sonic TC 15. I'm doing pretty decent today. Kind of tired. Have we got Leo Boat Tech Magnoli? Man, we got some new people in the chat tonight. Welcome to the chat for all you guys that are new. Ordered service tray plus. Thanks for the review. You're welcome, man. That is an awesome tool cart or tray. I don't know what you even call it because it's got a drawer in it. I feel like it's, you know, heavy duty. I love that thing. I think it's the best one out there. It's a little pricey. Not gonna lie, a little pricey. Hybrid. There you go. That's a good good term for it. This guy right here, he's angry as fuck. Just angry. Ah, uh, my birthday weekend was pretty laid back. You must be tired because you wasn't all hyped. No, I'm. I'm not. I am. I am. I am pretty. Uh, pretty wore down. I've I've gotten like eight hours of sleep, maybe in about two and a half days. Yep, I'm up at the old place. Well, not the old place. This is my buddy's my buddy shop. His in. <clears throat> Mister Subaru, what's going on? Had to had to fight to get my coke and stuff today. <laughs> you guys want to see the the big maximizer? Should we do a toolbox tour, Brian? Can we do a toolbox tour? <laughs> Hunter Skinner, what's going on? Check me, Kentucky. See if I missed anybody. I apologize. I'm on my phone, so it's really small. Sheen, Sean Dandy. 
Welcome back to the game. 30 people. Backwoods mechanic, what's up, my friend? How you doing? Down East Outdoors, how you doing, brother? J.C. Smith. Look at this little gem right here. Ooh, buddy. Got me a new, I got me another unnecessary ratchet. <laughs> I can't believe I got my coke and stuff. You guys want to hear a good story. So I ordered some tools today and it, they, it got a little foobard on my shipping. And uh, so when it got to me, I had to chase it down, run it down. And luckily I had a good buddy who works for UPS, old Aaron H. Shout out to Aaron H. today. And he hooked me up and uh, helped me get a hold of somebody. And we got in there and snuck around and got my stuff. And it's a little $500 toolbox is what it was, basically. A little $500 box, $500 box of tools. Larry Borkstrom, what's going on, man? I had to basically, Mr. Subaru, I basically had to... I had to basically bootleg it through the through the channel. Hey, can we do a toolbox tour? Come on. Huh? It doesn't matter. That's what makes it better. That's it adds character. It's super unorganized. And it's it's, Since, it's dirty as fuck. It's not even that bad. Who thinks that's that that who let me let me ask anybody right now. Who thinks that's bad? I, I my toolbox works, looks worse than that right now. It just, I mean, when you're working, that's what happens, fellas. Grim's Auto, what's up? Yeah, that's nothing. Mine's worse. <laughs> Let's see it. Look at the socket drawer. This is a, he made this socket tray holder. Ugh! He made this. Was it your dad made it or you made it? He made it. He made it when he was four years old, when he first started turning the wrench. He literally put the plywood down in his toolbox and then put all these metal rails in here. It's the same tool board that for toolboxes over all the Yeah. Years. Look at all the oil on it. This thing's literally, you can't even find varnish on your furniture this good. <laughs> I mean, that is gangster right there. Yeah. These are well used tools. I don't even have underwear that's used that good. <laughs> Look at this. He's still got all 36 2 snap on ratchets. JC Smith will appreciate this. Look at the wrenches. That's what I like about the Mac doors. Look at how nice and wide they are for the maximizers. Get all your wrenches in there. Angle. That ain't even the money drawer. This is the money drawer right here. Isn't this the money drawer? <laughs> Pullers like crazy. That's all my stranded building tools. He was a tranny builder, not the kind that gets... Oh, not that. We can't show that one. Yep. So. There we go. There's, there's a good one. Remember that kid I showed you guys? Pullers galore. We're just doing a quick toolbox tour. One of these days, I'll get him to step up and actually talk about this stuff. He's kind of shy. He's definitely a snap-on diehard. You got a drawer slide hanging up over here? Sure do. Got a drawer slide. Gotta talk to the old Maco man. Look at this plier drawer, guys. <laughs> that is a plier drawer right there. He's as bad as I am. Just look at the history right there. <clears throat> Anyways, fellas. <laughs> I figured JC would appreciate that. That's what most guys... That's what I... Don't generally see guys that have been doing it for a long time. I'm a little bit neater than most.
Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's actually dried up, Mr. Subaru. I've replaced a lot of Max slides. Yeah. Well, one day, JC, you'll be able to trade in your roll carts. Craig Morris, where's the snack drawer? <laughs> He's got a whole candy machine here. He doesn't need one. Uh, catch up here. Toolbox is a work box, yeah. Looks like that exploded. Love the tours. Right? I'm, 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 I'm anal. I like showing messy toolboxes. All right, I think I kind of got caught up. I apologize. Can't give up the toolbox for space and the snacks now. So, Brian actually bought this toolbox. It's a funny story because Brian's a diehard Snap-on guy. He literally bought this toolbox and he got a smoking deal on it. What did you pay for this? $3,000 is what he paid for this with the locker, with his old two bank KRL. Talk about, and this box is 88 inches long, so it's an MB8, MB8827 will be the Mac part number now for it. That box retails for over $16,000. And he had like, he's got like five grand into this. Garrison G, what's up, my man? Yeah, he's got a fridge here too. I've replaced a lot of snap-on ones for customers. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm sure you have. Their slides are notoriously, you know. I'm not a tool collector. I'm a tool abuser. I'm kind of a little bit both. Mark Guillotine, what's going on? AgTech45. What's shaking, brother? We're up in the we're up in the house here at my buddy's shop. Crackhead price, exactly. Brand new, mind you. Brand spanking new he got this. Brian gets some pretty smoking deals. There's no doubt about it. Brian is not a... He's he's definitely smart when he buys stuff. I like the uh, tool uh, sort wire ones I got. For wire, plier racks. Man, I got to tell you. I was... Uh, I want to tell you, Mr. Subaru. Thank you, Princess Jamie. Appreciate the super chat. 1,900 miles today. Sorry, I can't put the super chats up on the screen. I'm on that. Yeah, that's uh, JC. I, you know what? Honestly, there ain't nobody out there. Well, the new Mac ones, are, they might be, but they're Stanley Vidmar ones is basically what they are in the Mac HD, and they're bearingless. That's the big, that's the downfall with slides that I've always found is that, a, the ball bearings get dry or they come out of the slide, and that's where the failure point is always in them. Everyday fleet tech. Oh, my God, that's a bad day. Just broke an extractor off. Uh, Mr. Subaru, I was actually surprised at how much this 3 8 how heavy this thing is. This thing is a little beast. This is the, uh, what is it, 37, 27? 37, 26, 170, 178, whatever, 170 millimeter, 170 millimeter length. Man, this thing is as a stout little ratchet. Let's get into Brian's ratchet door. Oh, guess that would be comparable to this guy right here. This is much heavier than a snap-on ratchet. Much heavier. The coking is outweighs it by a vast majority surprisingly and it's shorter it was very interesting too could not believe that i got the little coke and swivels too talk about expensive little gems oh henry where'd you go Dave, one mechanic. Sorry, buddy. I, did I miss you? I appreciate one, uh, Mr. Subaru getting that part number for you. 
Sorry, I'm not very diligent. I can't see this very well because I'm on my phone. It's so tiny. Everyday Fleet Tech, it's good to see you, brother. Checkmate 115. The hooks in the wrench door. Alignment, what are they called specifically? The hooks in the wrench door? The wrench racks? You talking about these? Greasy shop rag. What's up, man? Scott Seidel. How you doing, buddy? Love that guy's channel. Nick J.C. Smith made a katana steel. Yeah, can of tuna. Can of tuna is what we used to call them. Uh, Mr. Subaru. Oh, I did. Sorry. I'm like I said. I'm kind of tired. The bald mechanic. Hard to hearing. CP. What's up? Hey, man. Welcome to the channel. I'm a little bit goofy tonight. I can just tell I'm off. I had to run around and go get this stupid freaking. Uh, I'm out of my element, you know. And uh, I had to run around and get this that that package from UPS. And uh, yeah. Missed the beginning. Where are you broadcasting? My buddy shop. It's right next to my where my old shop was. Where well, my shop, old shop is. We, he, at the other end there, I do work out of there sometimes. Can your buddy do a shop tour? Yeah. We can do a shop tour sometime. Just got to talk to him. Brian Meadows, what's up, man? I don't know how long we'll stay on. Like I said, so... It was late. Yeah, I was running around Ag Tech getting that, uh, getting that stupid package from UPS. They were supposed to be ready at 6.30, and she never showed up until 7 o'clock with the package. Told me she had it, said meet her there at 6.30, and then I waited till 7. Waited all day for a package that got delivered at 10 to the wrong address this morning. So, I need, needless to say, I was not happy. Not only that, it was exhausting today. And uh, yesterday, I had a doctor's appointment, and it was exhausting they had me there all day and just uh i just uh didn't sleep very well <clears throat> my hair is stupid long it's like it's getting out of control i need to get a freaking haircut but it's getting to be winter so what's the point and i'm just a little bit off backwoods that's uh crazy our fedex guys and ups guys are pretty equal out here Normally don't have a problem. That's why I was able to get it. My UPS, so the UPS package, because it had a wrong address, they were going to turn it around and send it back. That's what the standard issue is. But since I knew somebody, went ahead. JC, uh, I wanted to, I, that was a pretty awesome tool haul you had the other day too. I saw that sucker. You Man, you got some Tiger tools, like crazy amount of Tiger tools. I'm gonna turn this light off. I don't think I need it. It's hurting my eyes. Tech May, what's going on? How you doing? And this thing is just absolutely hideous to read off them. You put the hooks on the ratchets. Oh, the paws? Adjust the rods. You put you put the hooks on a ratchet to adjust the tie rods for toe adjustments. Cro uh, the well, I'm I'm drawing a blank. You put the hooks on a ratchet. Are you talking about the the toe uh, adjusters? God, what are those things called, Brian? Uh, somebody's in the chat can tell me. I know what he's talking about. How my so the RBR? Do I look? To, everybody says it. Hey Phil, what's going on? Uh, yeah, JC, that's definitely the life of doing a video about tools. 
That is 100% the fact right there. Um, Brian, what's that called? Toe adjustment tool? Tie rod end tool? What's that? What's that tool called that looks like a double hook that you put on for adjusting tie rods? Why am I, like, huh? Which one? The one that's got the big C in it. You do tie rods, it's got the, what's it called? I don't need to see it. Yeah. This one right here. I don't. Anyway, uh. Why am I drawing a blank? My mind is not working. He don't even know. It's tie rod end tool is what it is. Yeah, these ones right here, checkmate. Yeah, the tech, uh, the tech and angle wrenches are definitely sweet. Patch of Heaven Farms, what's up? Yeah, the tech and angle wrenches. I'm, I've already got a set of those ordered too. You got to get on those suckers right now. <clears throat> These are tie rod end tools, not a wrench. Pretty sure they're just tie rod ends. Can't remember the name. I don't know why my brain's not working. How are the RBRT stri extractors compared to the old Mac extractors? Are they stronger? I'm getting them ASAP. Are you talking about the straight fluted extractors at Everyday Fleet Tech? Because that makes a big difference. The a RBRT extractor set that I have is something that you definitely, you're not going to get the straight fluted extractors and they actually have a other extractor that's even bigger than the straight fluted ones. That's for heavy duty stuff. Yeah, so they have a they have heavy duty set that's not the extractor little ones like I showed you. Uh, there's there's a video I did and it, and Dan showed them and they're long and they're heavy duty. Those are probably what you're wanting versus the if the straight fluted ones are not working for you and you need some extra depth with some strength. You want those heavy duty RBRT. They're like. I think they're about quarter inch stock, so they're pretty beefy. They're like, I mean, they would they would be, or maybe even almost like three eight stock. Yeah. So I wouldn't if you're trying if you're having trouble breaking regular straight fluted ones, I wouldn't get the extractor ones because you're not gonna you're not gonna be better off with those. Yeah, I did one mechanic. I I can't see sh nothing on here. Uh, I. And I can't go look at the text because it cl clears, it shuts me down. So if somebody's got a question, just tell them to ask it again, please. I appreciate that. Uh, something about, a, I seen it was the text as it flashed in a little bit on my top screen. It said something about buying a snap-on. Should you buy a snap-on or should you buy an Ep or an, an, a, a Mac? <sighs> I bought some snap-on pliers today and their flank drive that will go up to 7 eighths, new product. They were, huh, that's interesting. I'd like to see those. If it's a plier, I definitely want some. Looking at quarter inch up to two inch, they sell out. Yeah, they do. Tempe Ranch, those, uh, got corn picked today. Oh, sweet. Did you get a video up yet? He's got a, he's got an old new idea, corn picker. Huh? Right. <laughs> Brian says, so do we. <laughs> This is Iowa. Everybody that farmed in the last decade has corn pickers. Still, not. we had a John Deere. We had a John Deere and a. Uh, I gotta set this down. I know you guys are probably. Huh? Yeah, I had. A, we had a. We had one for. Uh, the uni one for. Uh, yeah, that's the one we had for re, for beans, and then we had the. Well, the H had the corn picker on it. We, did, we had the one that was mounted to the H, so you didn't have to pull all that mess. The whole 
cab over type deal. Oh, man, my hand. My mouth's already getting dry. Okay, here we go. Moto. Hey, CP. Would you buy a Mac Edge 27-inch chest or a Snap-on Heritage 27-inch chest? Well, I would definitely... It'll all come down to me for price because really, single bay toolbox, you're probably going to be stuck with it for the rest of your life. Um, that's that's where you're at on that. I, I like the Mac Edges because the tops open up wider, but I haven't looked at a Snap-on for a long, long time in that size. <sighs> and then when it comes right down to it, you need to get your need to get your price. Flank drive wrench is 417 stupid high. Thank you Moto. Thank you Moto. Uh 604 for asking again. Definitely appreciate that. Uh yeah, I'm doing all right. Yeah, one row. No, we had it was two rows. H had two rows. It was one on each side of the tricycle tire. Narrow front ends. I never call them tricycles. Everybody calls them tricycles now. I always call them narrow front ends. New snap-on feeler gauge set within. Oh yeah, I seen that. I wanted to get that. That's a nice set, and it you can you don't have to have that big bulky set. You can have just that one set. Peter Akvar, how's it going, buddy? Tie rod adjuster, yeah, that's what I thought. Bumble Brimfield. Thank you, Moto604. I appreciate that. Anthony Bezler, how you doing? I'd pay 400 for those wrenches if they were high, but I can't beat them. <laughs> you had down east. Dano. Richard Ocho, what's going on, man? Buy once, cry once. Yeah. I like the tactics when it comes to... Are we still talking about angle wrench or are we talking about the flank wrench? I, I'm not a fan of the flank drive wrenches. Because I, I have oftentimes been bit by the flank drive part. Not that I own too many of them, but I do own a couple me it's a narrow wide or single wheel yeah single wheel it's that an f12 has a single wheel with an f22 hey patch of heaven farms i got a channel you should check out it's called just a few acres guy's got an awesome collection i don't know if you've seen his channel um super awesome guy dude doing a uh full he's doing all his farming like just raising cattle raises some small they're like belted cattle but they're small they're some different breed pigs chickens does all that and then but you know butchers them all and you'll love it uh yeah josh is back i'm all right can't complain I got to go out here. I got to head out here to my cousins here in a little bit. So I was trying to get everything sorted. And I've been running around like crazy for the last couple hours. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been... Uh, Tecton would have been way richer. I've seen him. Not sure if I subscribe. I tell you what. He does some really cool... I watched all his video and all on his farm tour. He's got a, He's got a 656... Um, he's got an F20 he did. It's really nice. He's got an old McCormick Deering 1920s. It's pretty sweet with rubber steel wheels. And, uh, then he's got a Super C. Oh, man. I can't remember what all he has now. My brain is not working, guys. Hey, what's up, Mr. Chris? It really is not working. Uh, I stopped up here because he's going to go with me out to my cousin's. I come up here and help these guys out sometimes. Some days, some some days I do, and some days I don't. Some days I just harass them. What are some of my favorite YouTube channels? Uh, Vice Grip Garage, 
junkyard digs, uh, cars and cameras, um, Vasily builds, a patch of heaven farms, um, JC Smith, Mr. Subaru Tech. Um, I actually follow and watch a lot of people religiously. In fact, I only usually watch YouTube for the most part. A, less drama. Well, I guess technically less drama with seeing what's going on in the news. And two, I just like supporting the people. A lot of subscribers in here I watch, um, like Darian Robinson, uh, One Mechanic. Um, let's see, who else is there? Dano. Uh, Heavy Wrench. Uh, let's see here. Mark Schumacher, did I miss you, buddy? I, prob I apologize. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people in here. Yoda Doug. A lot of people. I'm kind of bland tonight, guys. I apologize. Greasy Shop Rag. Yep. I watch him. Scott Seidel's got a nice, ch a good channel. Fun to watch. BSS. <laughs> Don't always call, comment on a lot of stuff, but I definitely uh, watch a lot of stuff. Try to comment as much as I can, but usually I'm just letting the videos play. Goes through my subscription. Automatic. I put it on autoplay and let it go. Henry, what are you doing? You better calm down, boy. You best calm down, little fella. You best calm down. Ring a ding ding. Ugh. Could watch. I could never watch. Yeah, TV is garbage to me anymore. I watch YouTube. Uh, let's talk. Who else? Do I? Yep, talking about just a few. Pat Clark Barnes, how's it going? Oh, guys, I apologize if I'm uh, a little bit dragging tonight. I just, I'm not myself. Just wore out. Yeah, Chris Freeman, I'm up at my buddy shop. We're up here at his place. We did a little tour on his toolbox. I don't know if it's just the week or what, but Power Stroke Jude, what's up, my man? How you doing, brother? Oh yeah, Gold Rush. I do like Gold Rush. I take 45. Heck yeah. I'm thinking about selling most of my projects and just putting the money back into tools. No time for personal projects. You got to do what you got to do, BSS. And I'll tell you what, making money is all about, you know, whatever's going to do you the best. Personal projects, if you may build <coughs> build them and sell them. Then you're then uh, you're making money that way. So there's two sides of every coin, in my opinion. I haven't watched TV for years. Waste of funds for me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I feel like YouTube definitely. I do learn a lot. There's a lot of people teaching. For instance, Mr. Subaru the other day just learned me up on that uh, ratchet build he did. I never realized that the faceplate, which I knew the faceplate would make a big difference, but I just didn't really think about it being a big difference where the screws were at <coughs> on that faceplate. So that was an interesting uh, video to watch. Definitely enjoyed that. Um, I do, there's an Oliver guy. I watched his channel. Man, he is a encyclopedia of Oliver tractors. And, uh, you know, I, I like old tractors a lot. I have a couple old farm malls. And, uh, you know, J.C. Smith is a good channel too, speaking of. That guy will teach you a lot of stuff too. J.C. is no joke when it comes to uh, diesel trucks. Guy does a lot of different stuff. I definitely like JC's channel for that instance right there. If I ever have a problem with a medium duty, heavy duty truck, I am definitely 
going to get a hold of JC. The guy's done it all, seen it all. I am a car guy. I like old cars. I like I like a lot of classic cars. Vice Grip Garage is funny. He's good for a laugh. You got comedy. You got information. Uh, Junkyard Digs, his channel, um, Thunderhead. 289 he's he's really cool uh he's got he does a lot of carburetor builds uh scanner danner yeah there's so much to be yeah i do check yep jc's got his instagram like yeah jc's always posting up stuff on his instagram showing cool stuff too for sure scanner danner uh i like uh scanner danner and south main auto i definitely check out a lot of south main auto stuff you know, you can never, no matter how much you think you know, you can never keep up with this industry. There's nobody out there. Even I, I'm sure those guys even daily constantly have to battle learning something. You know, they're always doing case studies, and that's the reason why. Bearded Mechanic, how's it going? Dwayne B., what's up? Rachel Gingles channel for all the farm all for i just learned the other day that this was an interesting one speaking of tractors ford was the first three-point tractor out i did not realize that the guy from um just a few acres because international or farm all was fighting ford for the rights for they had the fast hitch two-point and international actually redesigned their two-point fast hitch to a three-point kind of deal so that they were allowed to get away with it. Everybody else had to pay for the three-point hitch because Ford Aidens actually started the market on that. So that was really, yep, Ford Ferguson. Yep, they were a combination. Mr. Ferguson and Mr. Ford got together. Henry Ford and uh, Ferguson got together and they designed the three-point. Really cool stuff. Stole it from Ferguson. Yeah, Ferguson invented it, but they were actually partners. Who's Eric? Oh, Eric, the car guy. Thank you, guys. Mike Swindell, what's up? Wish Mike Swindell would do videos. That guy's got some tractors he deals with over there in Indiana, I believe. Yeah, I, I tried watching Eric, the car guy, a couple times. He's definitely all over the place. Had a 52 Ford for, or Ferguson 30, yeah. So the Super 55 Oliver, then I found out the Super 55 Oliver, they built their three-point. That was the competitor to, of course, everybody did. Massey did it, and, um, you know, obviously the Massey Ferguson and, and whatnot, they all did it. Started building competitors to an 8-in tractor. Farmall was a little bit of the, they were a little bit out of, the, out of their late league. They, they waited a little bit late to the game, I think, when it came to a, Orchard tractor or low profile. Tractors are awesome. And, you know, we've had a lot of history here in Iowa about them. They're just not worth anything. That's the only reason why I don't get into them. They're worse than tools by far. <laughs> Everybody talk can complain about tools. But like I said, there's things you can do that are worse than buying tools. First of all, you can do drugs. That's a waste of money. Second of all, you could race stock cars. That's a huge waste of money. Third of all, you could be drinking booze, another huge waste of money, which every once in a while it's nice, but you don't get nothing out of it but a hangover. What was my other one that I said? Eating food, maybe? I don't remember. Anyways, there's a lot of things you can do wasting your money versus doing buying tools. I drag race for quite, yeah, drag racing. <laughs> Without a sponsorship for drag racing, that literally blows your money. Ex-wives, yeah. Having a lot of mistresses, that would cost you a lot of money too. I love the Oliver. Hell yeah, with the Oliver buddy, I love that Oliver guy, Alice. I love a one farm. Yeah, I am a farm all man too. I love the old farm alls and IHs. I am. I mean, I grew up on a 1086, an H 706, 806. I love internationals and farm alls. White tractors still floating around, yep. I love, our fair is one of the best in the world probably for tractors during the fair time. That's the one thing I miss about the fair 
is the tractors that are in the fair. Tarek, what's up? I don't vacation. I don't drink much. Don't do drugs. But I may be addicted to trucks. But like I said, JC, there's a lot worse things. I got a Super C2, Dwayne V. Watching CP will cost you money. <laughs> it won't cost you money, though, because remember, you're buying a tool. So you're getting something tangible. Just sold my farm all age this summer. Oh, my God, Grim. Man, that makes me sick. I wanted to get an H. 500 bucks, I would have bought it. You ever run across a new tractor, Grim? You get a hold of me. I should just give you my number. CP is singing my song, Red Power, Black Smoke. Jake, you would love my cousin's place. No doubt about it. You would love my cousin's place. He has every farm mall and international up to like 906. Like I said that last time, gleaners and turbo cats. I think I can get a tractor channel started with you guys. It's probably the right place to be doing it. I, you know, these new tractors are just so dang. It's not what they used to be. That's the sad part. You can't farm with the old tractors hardly, but got a regular C, an M, yep, Super M, a B, and a 400. I need to restore. My Super C is completely cherry, 100% restored. It is an awesome tractor. Wide front end, factory wide front end, woods belly mower. It's 100%. I should find a picture of it and post it up. And the cat dozer you got, Mr. Subaru, that would be really cool. I would like to come help you do that. That would be fun to get that old gem bun running. That would make an awesome video. I guarantee you if you started doing that one, will it run or get it started? That one would, that one would blow up because people go nuts over old equipment. I can't believe the views people get on that stuff. That and old cars. Old Alice Chalmers, like a WD... I'm a tractor and tool addict. One of these days, Tony, I will. One of these days. It's tucked away right now, and it's... I got to get it out. I'll sell you my old Bob and Scat. How much? I'm always, I'm always looking to buy something. Whoops, sorry about that, guys. I missed it. I don't know what's going on here. It's kicked me off twice. I've had a WD for 600, Jubilee. Oh, Jubilee. And an Aiden. Man, talk about a tractor that's almost worthless. There ain't no power in those things. I remember my neighbor had one. We always pulled them out. All right, I'm sorry I missed that. Time to hurry. Had a John Deere R and a B. I like the old John Deere's. Man, they are a pain to start. It's because some people don't understand the value of those old machines. Yeah, no. Good iron. I mean, we're talking 30s and 40s things, and they run, and you can do work with them. That's what kills me about them. People are just like, they throw them away. Temporary had to leave to Florida a few months, Ohio, as a teen, and went to school directly across from the Akron shop, always some loud stuff going on there. Oh, yeah. I swear the 1940s and 60s diesel equipment were run of the mud and dirty water, impossible to kill them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm back now. Sorry about that. 67 Plymouth what? What is that? My buddy has an 8 in with a loader here in my place. That's nice. I never was a big Ford fan, I will tell you that. The Ford 8 ends. They just never had enough power. For a grand? Wow, what what uh you have to send me a get into my email and send me pictures, Grim, and then I'll give you my phone number and you can just text me whenever you want. Chad XR six fifty at gmail dot com, Grim. Definitely need to talk to you about that. I watched Squash for I have an Chris Freeman, I have an IH 1066, 
3444 Farmall Cub H Cadet 128 4B 364 Massey 1030 New Holland John Deere. Wow. I think I think we lost a lot of people for that. I can kill my old Kubota, literally have to sparks out of the exhaust on the verge of running away the next day it's like nothing ever happened. <laughs> I hate the eight and two. Too fast in first gear for some, yep. I remember the neighbors was just, it was just constantly a problem. Man, that's, uh, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, seeing your, uh, let me get this, see if I got this screen fuzzy. Whoops. I might have had a dirty camera lens. Tarek, I believe that if anything's running for you after watching you roll a brand new Gale. <laughs> oh, look at that. It was my camera. It was dirty. It's for such an underpowered tractor, an 8-in is still... So, yeah, they do. That's the, the thing about them, JC. Everybody that I've ever known, will, every farmer will tell you an 8-in is the most worthless tractor, but they sell for millions of dollars, and I just don't understand it. And for years, $3,000 for that tractor, and that costs more than what it was new. 856, 1066, 1456, and IH stash not restored. Oh, wow, Mike. You, you, how many tractors do you have restored, Mike? I have literally seen your stuff, and I know that 383 Super Commando. <laughs> Tarek, it wasn't brand new. I put 16 hours on it. Oh, my God. You're harder on equipment than, than, uh, yeah. Decent one will bring 12 to 1800. PA can get 500. We can't get 500. That is weird. They'll sell for like, they'll sell for two to three thousand dollars around here. Of course, I haven't looked at them for a long time. That's they only should be worth a grand. I just have never been a fan of them. We had a Oliver Super 55, and that was three times the tractor that was. 10K for a motor and an 8 in, Larry. Yeah, they're just... And I and that's why I've always liked... And I think that's why the red tractors have always been dominant to me, too, because you can get all the power you want out of them, and they're cheap. I pulled with my Super M and won a lot of pulling in the classic tractor division. Had it all hopped up. I'd farm with horses before I'd buy an eight in. Yes, Mike, I agree. I would rather have a team of Belgians than an eight in. No joke. That is awesome, Mike. I love it. Works for tools. Did I miss him? Is he in here? Hey, what's up, Eric? Ugh. Oh. What are you doing, fella? Henry is just like, I need to get up in here. Mark Schumacher, thank you, buddy. <laughs> Henry says thanks. <sighs> Jeffrey Sturgill, how you doing? Get, go on, get up here then. Go on, boy. Quit sniffing around. <sighs> right. Right. I mean, I'm not saying they're not, I mean, I, I don't want to make, make it sound like I hate them. I mean, it's not like Harbor Freight to me. It's just they, you know, the four to eight ends and nine ends were always like, every time I had to use one, it was like, why did I even waste my time? I might as well got a riding lawnmower. Jeep tractor. Are you comfortable now, Henry? Mark Schumacher, I appreciate you that, there for that uh, super chat. You're an awesome guy, man. Mike did nail it. He, he nailed it right on the head. Don't get me wrong. I love old John Deere's, but I just wasn't a John. I didn't grow up around them. 
and John Deere's are pretty popular around here. You know, like the B's and the A's, I honestly didn't find those to be very useful. In fact, unless it was a 40-20 John Deere, I really don't know much about any John Deere's being really that great for anything. A lot of them were narrow in front ends, you know. We had a lot of wide front end farm walls, and they did the job. Like Super M did a lot of work for us. Super M and an H did a lot of work for us when I was a kid. Then we got the 656, then we got the 806, and then we got the 1086. <coughs> 1066, 1086, I don't know. We got the... I appreciate it, Mark. I don't want to sell tractors. I want to sell trucks that transport the tractors. I would love to sell. How about Case in Iowa? Yeah. It's, it's tough, man, because uh, they built them in Nebraska. Yeah, they are. John Deere's are, bo are dominant here. Yep, Bumble, I've heard that. I don't even get involved with... There's the air compressor. I don't even get involved with uh, too much John Deere new technology. I hear the new case stuff is pretty good. I have a JNC. Oh yeah, buddy. Grim, you are set. I'll tell you what, that little 345, I'm looking forward to trying that out. What What's going on? I'm fucking hit the pisser here, dude. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Mr. Swindell's trucks, everything that they have, their whole deal. If you guys haven't checked out Mike Swindell on Instagram, definitely go do it. If you're a tractor fan and uh, like ag equipment and stuff like that, Mike's always got awesome stuff. I would love to go over there and tour his place. No, well, you know, I, I don't want farmers working on their own stuff too because that's exactly why I got into doing what I was doing was because... Growing up around farmer. Green parts just so expensive. They are ridiculous. Ford sold their tractor business in 1988, yet I'm still here. Down East is on Instagram, I believe, aren't you? I thought I felt like I talked to you all the time down east. Maybe, I don't know. I talk to so many people, I'd get confused. Uh, working on the, uh, working on the, uh, the, Brian's got this, uh, we'll take a gander over here quick. Ugh! Brian's got a pretty cool old tractor himself. He's part of the old tractor club. <laughs> you guys don't, this is really a nice, nice forklift, though. Thank God the for, this shut off. What are years, what did we determine this was? 71, uh, Alice, Massey Ferguson. Massey Ferguson forklift, and it's actually in pretty good condition. It's got rubber tires in the front. It's a heavy duty one. JC, you would love this thing. What do you got into it now? $800. As it says, had to do some brakes, had the wheel off, had a gear that had to replace in there. We had the whole back end off. I had pictures of it, had the whole back end off, had the pump off, put these lights on it, modernized it, but it's a, it's a good old unit for $800. You can't buy them that cheap anymore, I guarantee you. Nice two post, heavy. I think this one's about a 5,000 pound rated. She's no joke. We put the engine in his boat in it, <laughs> had a big block, uh, 502 hanging off the front of it. I, the, only, the only problem I have with pneumatic stuff, JC, is when you start putting a lot of weight on them, the tires, like, they just, they squish down. <sighs> yeah. That's my only problem with them. I like the hard tires because they don't. If you get a 
you can get those hard pneumatic tires or the hard tires that got traction on them now uh, those things seem to be what I would consider pretty awesome I, I really like those <laughs> nothing better than a nice night of drinking beer and the grain dryer smelling oh yeah yeah you hear them all over here smell that smell <laughs> Nick Pixel, you'll find them right here. Pit Viver, who loves red. There's a, yeah, corn, the cold, cold the corn stars, the pit. I supposed to get a JMC 660, got a 770 and said, yeah, that's, that's a good deal, Larry. That's a good problem. Would definitely rather do LOI injectors than LB7s. <laughs> no joke right there. Sweet. Yeah, I got. Will do. Maniac 656. Oh, that's your d email. Sorry. Nick, I'm about to sign off too. I gotta get, uh, I gotta get going here. And it's about, I, I got, it's gonna be late if I don't. I don't, I want to get home tonight or at a decent time. <coughs> gotta get out there. So, I just wanted to get on here and say hi. Yeah, we did, Mike. We got about uh, three inches one day. JC, thanks for stopping by. Good quick chat. Sorry, guys, it wasn't long tonight, but uh, I had prior engagement. Do your forklift techs make bank, and they're easy as hell to work on. There's literally, I mean, there's really hardly that much skill in working on these things. They're absolutely, working on a forklift would be a piece of cake job. One mechanic, you're, I appreciate you guys stopping by. I appreciate all you guys for stopping by. You know, I'm just, uh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Bumble is not overdo it. So, um, I'll, I'll leave a little bit of live streaming for somebody else tonight, but I just wanted to come in, have a little chat since I was up here and thought you guys would like to see stuff. Absolutely. Mike, I would definitely love to do that. One of these days when everything calms down, it'd be awesome to, uh, I'd like to swing out your way, stop over to see Nick Pixel. These guys from Ohio, any other no, uh, Grimm's is. Grimm's Auto Service has got a, he's from up in uh, north here. I'm looking for a cheap brake lathe. Cheap brake lathe. If you guys got your ears on and you're in Iowa, around Iowa, you need it. Missouri and Minnesota too. I Missouri, think. Minnesota. Anybody knows about a cheap brake lathe, let me know. Yeah, Brian likes to show off his stuff. He just doesn't like to talk very well. He gets nervous. Grundy Center, that's right. Graham, if you run across anybody up that way, we'll come up there and get one. I'm not scared. I'll drive all over and go get anything. Pat Saunders, what's up, man? Sorry, you're, I'm getting ready to sign off. It's a short stream tonight, so appreciate you stopping by. Abner Trinidad. I'm getting ready to sign off. Unfortunately, it's just a short one. King Sport Tool Review. Thank you, buddy. All right, guys. Remember, keep your hands dirty and your money clean. Thanks for watching.